Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. I just got a tooth removed today, so I'm gonna try to make this video quick. Let's solve make the string great. This is a pretty verbose explanation, so I'm not gonna read all of it. It's relatively simple though. We're given an input string like this. So suppose it is this. Anytime we have two adjacent characters that are not equal to each other, they don't exactly say that here, but basically they cannot be equal to each other. One of them has to be lowercase and one has to be uppercase. Therefore, they cannot be equal. And if they are the same character, just in a different like uppercase or lowercase, then then we basically want to remove those characters and then from the input string return the result. There might be multiple cases where we have to remove characters though, but they tell us that the answer is guaranteed to be unique. And that's not just because they're going to give us inputs that will guarantee that. It's actually because when you think about it, like let's just think about an example. Suppose we have lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, uppercase. When there's an even number of these, then it works out, right? Delete these and delete these, and then the answer is given. What about this, where we have a choice? We could delete these two and delete these two, and we're left with a lowercase e. Well, if we make the other choice, delete these two and these two, we're actually left with a lowercase e on the other side as well. So really, we actually don't have a choice. The result is always gonna be the same. Now, you don't really have to figure this out, but I just thought it was worth mentioning because you know this is an easy problem, but maybe if it was a medium problem, you would have to figure out stuff like this on your own. So the problem is actually gonna be relatively simple. The solution is just gonna be iterating over the string. All we have to do is remove those pairs. Now, how are we gonna identify that one of those pairs exist? Well, basically, it's gonna be an if statement. We're gonna check that, first of all, the adjacent characters are not equal to each other. They cannot be equal. And then we're either gonna convert both characters to lowercase or convert both characters to uppercase. I'm probably gonna stick with lower, but it doesn't really matter what you choose. Once you convert both of them to lowercase, if they are equal to each other, but the original characters are not equal to each other, then we remove them. So pretty straightforward. We could implement this with just a single pointer. We would shift this pointer until it reached the second to last character because every time we're gonna be comparing the character at i and uh, i plus one. And this will work out. It's just that there's gonna be a couple edge cases for us to handle because suppose like for these two adjacent characters, they're not equal. Okay, then we're gonna keep this character for sure. Then we're gonna shift the pointer and then look at these two characters. They are like the case where we eliminate them. Okay, in that case, we'd shift the pointer twice. It would be shifted here because we deleted this character. Now here where they're not equal, once again, we shift the pointer once and now we're just gonna keep doing that until we get here. By the time we're done with this, we're gonna add this character to the result and then we're gonna be stopping here. We're not gonna continue here because we don't have any characters to uh, compare. So basically we need like an extra if statement once we reach the last position to make sure that we add this character to the result if it wasn't removed. And so pretty much we can avoid this by solving the problem in a slightly more clever way. We can actually solve the problem by having a pointer and iterating over the entire input including at this character. And we do that by comparing this character with the previous character. But the only problem is when you do that, like look what happens here. I'm at this character, I decide to keep it. I'm at this character, I compare it with the previous character, I decide to keep it. Now I get to the third character and I look at the previous character. These are the same. So I wanna get rid of this, but we already decided to keep this character. But now we wanna change our mind. Now we wanna say actually get rid of it. So we wanna be able to retroactively remove characters that we already added. And specifically, we only would ever do that with the previous character. So the easiest data structure I can think of to accomplish this is called a stack. We can remove the last character from here in constant time. Now, if you weren't able to come up with this approach, it's okay. It's probably not because you weren't clever. It's probably because you had no need to come up with this solution because solving the problem with a regular loop is very feasible. So if you were able to do it that way, that's perfectly fine as well. It's just that I think this is just a little bit of a cleaner solution. And I didn't explicitly mention it, but you might've noticed that with the first character, we don't really have anything to compare 
the previous character to. So anytime we compare with the previous character, we want to make sure our stack is non-empty. Okay, now let's code it up. So I'm going to go ahead and declare our stack. And the benefit of this is actually that strings are immutable in most languages. So the way we're going to return this is we're going to add characters to this stack. And at the end, we're going to combine all of the characters. And this is just going to be a bit more efficient than if we were doing string manipulation. Because if you were to take a string and let's say, you know, add two strings together, that's generally going to be an O of N time operation every single time. So by joining them at the end, we can actually save some runtime by doing that. So at the end, this is how you can code that up. This is basically saying join every string that's in the stack. And this is the delimiter, which is an empty string. So basically just concatenate all those strings together. Okay, let's try to hurry up. So we're going to start our pointer at zero. You could also start it at one if you wanted to have like the first character already initialized here, but that's actually not required because our loop, the way we're going to write it, will actually handle that case for us. So while i is less than the length of the input string, there's a couple of cases here. One is if the characters are equal, right? Like that kind of case where we remove the characters. And that's actually not straightforward. There's multiple things involved. First, we check that our stack is non empty. And then, we check that the character at the top of our stack is not equal to the character that we're currently looking at. And lastly, we want to take the lowercase version of both characters and make sure that they are both equal to each other. In Python, that's really easy to do. We can just call lower like this and check that this is equal to s of i dot lower. And if they are, then in this if statement, we can say stack dot pop. So not only are we not adding this character to the stack, but we're removing the previous character from the stack. Now in the else case where they're not equal, then we keep whatever was on the stack and we take this character and add it to the stack as well. So stack.append s of i. Now, regardless of whichever of these executes, we will always increment our pointer by one. So this is kind of the benefit of the stack. We're always incrementing the pointer by one. In the other solution, you'd have to sometimes increment it by two, sometimes by one. So this is the whole solution. Let's run it to make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. Now, now, sometimes I feel like I'm cheating by using some of these built-in methods. I don't know about you. So I wanted to quickly show you how we can actually implement our own version of this. The reason I know how to do this off the top of my head is because I used to, well, the first language I learned was C. So I kind of got used to manipulating like ASCII values and just being familiar with them. So here we're going to write a function that given a character, we're going to convert it to the lowercase representation of that. In case you don't know, there is something called like an ASCII value. So every character like lowercase a will map to some integer, lowercase b, will map to some integer and they kind of go one by one. And the same thing is true with uppercase characters. Let's actually change this to say this is 100 and this is 101 and this is 102. This isn't accurate, but the specific value actually, you don't need to know what value each of these maps to to implement this function. That's kind of what I'm going to show you right now. I think it's pretty neat. Maybe you don't care. And if that's the case, you don't have to watch this, but I think it's kind of cool. So the thing is uppercase A will map to some value as well and uppercase B will map to some value as well. Now, what we want to do with this function is identify if this character is an uppercase character, then return the lowercase representation, the lowercase ASCII value of that character. If it's a lowercase character, though, then we just return that lowercase character itself. I think I misspoke earlier. If it's an uppercase character, we don't return the ASCII value of it. We return the a character. In both cases, we're returning a character. What we check is, and I know this off the top of my head, I know that uppercase characters have a smaller ASCII value than lowercase characters. So what I do here here is say if the ASCII value of this character, and in Python, that's called this function, you take a character, you get the ASCII value of it. So if this is less than the ASCII value of lowercase a, then we know it's an uppercase character. Now, if you didn't know this off the top of your head, you could change this if statement to say if this is less than lowercase a, or if this is a greater than lowercase z, because at the very least, most people know that ASCII values are continuous, like for A through Z, they're going to be continuous. So all we're trying to figure out is that this character is not a lowercase character. But I already know this, so I'm going to keep it simple like this. And now I'm going to say, how can we take this uppercase and map it to this character if we don't even know what these values happen to be? Like, we don't know what they are. Well, we can actually still do it if you're clever. Try to figure it out by yourself if you don't want me to spoil it for you, but let me show you. Whatever character we have, we know it's uppercase. 
take it, subtract from it the ASCII value of uppercase A, which we can get with this function. So now we know the delta. We know that if this was uppercase A, the delta is going to be zero. If this is uppercase B, the delta is going to be one. We take the delta and add it to the ASCII value of lowercase a. So I'm going to say this, I'm going to say lowercase a here, add to it this delta. And now we have the ASCII value of the lowercase character. Now we can take the ASCII value and convert it back into the string representation by calling this function. And after we do that, we just return it because that's what we're trying to do. Now, if it's not an uppercase character, we don't want to do this. So we would here just return the original character. So this is just me being, I guess, a smart ass, but I thought this was kind of interesting to know. And it's definitely problem solving skill. It's not something, you know, you just memorize this. It would be a lot easier to implement this if we had memorized like the ASCII value of lowercase a and uppercase a and whatnot. But just to prove to you that this does work, let's down here call that function that we just implemented in place of the built-in one. So uh, changing this one as well. Let's now just run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.